Okay, it is uh, Wednesday morning, February 27th. It's go time. Actually feeling pretty good, pretty confident, pretty loose. Surgery is just a couple hours away, and I'm leaving the house and inspired by those uh, who sent me some stuff. This is really cool. How the heck you turn this camera around? Am I just stupid? I'll just turn it around manually. Anyway, here we go. This is uh, the Notre Dame collection from the good people at Notre Dame and some friends who sent flowers cards that's pretty cool here we are at uc health arriving we we'll have to shut the camera off real soon here because we're going in let's do this let's rock fire alarm going on right now which is causing some duress I'm not sure why the fire Oh, listen. Attention all Let's listen. Code red drill, all clear. Oh, that was just Attention a drill. That would have sucked in the middle of surgery to have that thing go off. This is the end as we know it. I'm going to put something on my hair. Go ahead, Dr. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, we're a couple hours post-surgery. I'm starting to wake up a little bit, throat hurts. But my favorite part of the hospital, check this out. I absolutely obliterated the food here. Go ahead and pan out, Terry. The queen of chicken is shooting this video. But I just went crazy with all this food. It was awesome. Thank you for the food. And now I'm chewing on some nasty caramel that my dad left me. Probably stole 40 from the bank. Thanks. All right, so here we are about four hours post-op, I think. Chloe's helping me out. Hi, Chloe. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing here, Chloe? What's 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 going into me? Some sort of... Uh, antibiotics. Uh, antibiotics. Yeah. Um, my throat is sore or uh, my voice isn't working. Um, maybe because I was screaming so loud during surgery. I don't know. Actually, they put a tube down my throat. Uh, but these people at UC Health are so great. Everything is top-notch. Yes, finally, finally. All right, so my first walk, we're gonna go for a little bit of walk here. Let's see, let's move around the hospital, correct? Thanks, Chloe. Oh yeah, I'm not as fast anymore. <laughs> wow, okay. Oh, okay, it's not bad. I can feel tightness in there. Yeah. What's all this stuff here? It's just the... Just some continuous fluid. Yeah. All right, gang. I'm going to run a 40-yard dash here for the NFL Network. See if I could beat Rich Eisen's time. Yes. What was your name again? Alina. Alina, thank yeah. you. So I just walked down the hallway at a uh, feverish pace. My mouth, very dry. That's the weirdest thing. It's just a dry mouth. And it feels like I just got done with a four-hour session of Ab Ripper X. What are we doing this morning? What's? I was just doing some morning rounds. <laughs> okay, so what are you looking for in, in my uh, wound? We're just here? checking in to see how you're doing as far as your pain goes. And yeah. Make sure, making sure your night was good. Okay. And uh, that you're recovering okay. Is this yeah. usually just a one-night stay in the hospital? Yeah, generally, mm -hmm. you know, you, as long as you're doing okay mm -hmm. uh, and recovering okay, a lot of times you'll be able to go home, you know, yeah. the day after. Does it help that I'm an elite athlete? I'm yes. Kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, you're doing great. You're going to go home early this morning. Hey, well, guys, so gals, I want to thank you all very much for doing this for me. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the work you do. Yeah, our, our pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. All right, so this is Dr. Paul Maroney. He's the guy who delivered my prostate. I gave birth to a bouncing prostate yesterday. What was the size of it? Doc, how big are these things? Yeah, it's, a, it's about the size of a golf ball when we get it out. It's okay. Uh, it, it looks a little strange just because it's got a couple extra uh, limbs on it from yeah. the, the uh, seminal vesicles that are on there too. How long was the whole procedure? How long did it take? Uh, about two and a half hours. Is, know, is that pretty normal? Finish. That's pretty normal. Yeah. yeah, I'm 49 years old, I feel young, but you said you've done younger. What are the ages you've done? Uh, I'm trying to think of the youngest guy. I think I had a 40-year-old uh, 
so, yeah, so I've had a few really young men. I've, I've, I'm, I'm 45 myself. Uh, I remember a couple of guys that were mm. younger than me that have operated. What should men who turn 40 ask or do to catch this early? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's interesting. I will also say it's still controversial. Mm. And I, I think you need to do prostate screening intelligently. How do we do that? I, I personally believe that, that men in their 40s should at least get one PSA level just to see where they're at mm -hmm. and then discuss with uh, you know a doctor about what, what the meaning of that is. If it's below one, they probably don't need to get it checked for a long time, maybe eight or 10 years or certainly five years. But if it's above one and they're in their 40s, then they should have that follow up. When will I be, be able to play basketball again, Doc? That's a real question. <laughs> Can you play basketball now, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the... the uh, as far as when can you jump and do those types of things, I'd say you're, you'll be hopefully fully active by about two months. Nice. You could probably take some jump shots after three okay. or four weeks, but you're not going to want to be bodying around with guys. And two months ago, I thought the prostate was in my knee. Now it's in some lab somewhere. Do I get it back, by the way? Is it keepsake or where does it go? <laughs> no, that goes to our pathologist. <laughs> we, we keep it here. So. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Cool. And just like the other injection, yeah. um, don't rub the area. Okay. Yeah. Makes a big bruise. All right. That kind of thing. Okay. I'm not gonna be doing any buys and tries today. All right. Walking out of the hospital now. All right. Uh, hurts to walk a little bit. Thought I'd be in better shape. Apparently, I'm not. Hey everybody, two days removed from uh, surgery. Back home, working Twitter, uh, sitting down with my catheter. I don't know if you want to see that, but anyway. I uh, just want to take you through the steps of going through this surgery. It's called Da Vinci Surgery. And they take these robotic arms and it's like a video game. And my fine doctor, Dr. Paul Maroney at the University of Colorado Health, goes in there, snatches that, that prostate, and here we are two days later, I'm home, I can't do much, but I'm home. Hoping for the best. Enjoy. Well, I've got a little bit of a problem here. These are my wounds. And this one is bleeding pretty bad. I'm not sure why. Changing? Back in the emergency room. Yeah. Just no, I'm, no I'm, I'm good. You good? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Hello, How are you doing? He's making me a video. Totally better than you are. Okay. One week after surgery, I've been carrying my catheter around in my little nuggets bag here. You can see it come up my leg. Well, they're removing it today. And for any guy who's worn a catheter, or a gal, you know how eventful it is. I cannot wait. And here we are. Does that look like me? No, no, that's not, that's not it. Maybe a little larger? No, Huggy's not gonna do it. What'd you find there, honey? What size did you find for me? Let's see what we got. Ooh, look at these models. Ooh, you don't like me taping this? Yeah. Ooh, can I wear these? Always discreet. Mm -hmm. Nighttime is the worst when the mind just wanders. I used to think I was really mentally strong. I don't think I am. I am uh, I'm mentally sufficient for what I do for a living. But being mentally strong is the next level thing. That uh, you learn how to do on the job. Weird night last night. My first night without my catheter. I uh, peed myself twice. Woke up in the middle of the night about three and 
had a diaper full of pee. So got that going for me. Whoa, Johnny Buffont. Blow dried my hair today for the first time since I was like 16 years old. Anyway, uh, I've been doing Kegel after Kegel after Kegel. I've done enough Kegels where I guarantee I could probably place at least bronze or silver in the uh, Kegel Olympics. My pelvic floor is so strong that I'm not sure I have a pelvic ceiling, just a floor. All right, got the boys here on the radio doing my radio show as random trees continue to fall toward my house. Oh, very good. Terry, it's Molish coffee, stat. Terry, it's Molish coffee, stat. This is not happening, Henry. This is the last. Dateline, Denver, March 7th, 2019. Today was a big day. Got a call from Dr. Maroney today. Uh, about the pathology report, and uh, thankfully, it uh, it was negative on the margins. I'm not sure what the hell that means. But that's good news. Uh, negative on the tissue. Again, no knowledge what that stands for, but good news. Uh, something about a uh, core deal. The uh, the aggressive nature of the cancer more aggressive than they originally thought. But it did not reach the lymph nodes from what they've gathered. All the lymph nodes that they pulled, no sign of it. So we're very relieved. One more hurdle to clear. Uh, well, many more. This never <laughs> is truly clear. But I have a PSA test again in April, uh, hoping for a zero PSA, which means that uh, there's no longer any cancer for now. Shouldn't be a PSA level since I don't have a prostate. Which leads me to wonder. I don't understand why can't they can't come up with like an artificial prostate. They have artificial hips, artificial kneecaps, and all that business. I mean, if the prostate truly helps you regulate how you pee, right? Can't they just jam a golf ball up there or something? Same size. Some sort of robotic golf ball that helps you pee. Never say I didn't give anything to science. There's my gift. Thank you, UC Health. Thank you, Dr. Maroney. Thank you to all the wonderful nurses. Thank you, Dr. Khan, Dr. Zakowski, my PCPs at New West Physician, Laura, everybody, for getting the, uh, <laughs> getting the ball rolling so I can handle this business. Again, uh, a few months ago, I didn't know what a prostate was. Now I am a, uh, pretty much a doctor. I sure am. Oh my God. Uh, yes. Ooh. And also there's a friend of mine who works in Denver. He's been sick and uh, Vic Lombardi, I love you boy, get well. <laughs>